and Tommy Matola seemed happily married. Together, they built an extravagant house with two pools, a recording studio, a rifle range, 11 bathrooms. It was a poor girl's dream house. Yeah, this is the baby. The printy. What's that, printy? What is that? <laughs> no, no. Tommy didn't like the way you dressed. In promo after promo, Mariah became that ordinary black dress. Tommy's plan worked a treat. The little black dress. I don't think there was ever a moment when she had control of her own image or her own sound while she was at Sony. She was the diamond in the rough who was discovered by a great established A&R person who had um, who saw what she could be and then attempted to turn her into that. You cut off her blood supply. You basically cut off everything that made her what she was. It's difficult. It's difficult to take somebody like me and try to make me be a different way than what I am. She started off with a swept off her feet fantasy. She is a girl whose parents split up when she was young, who didn't have loads of contact with her dad, and she certainly went for a major father figure. And let's face it, he certainly did help her create her career. I was very, very young when I first became involved with him, and I didn't have, like, that overprotective parent there saying, what's going on, you know, maybe it's safer for you not to get involved in this relationship. But conversations would go something like this honey all you have to worry about is going into the studio and making the music at one point you and your friends referred to this bedford mansion you lived in with tommy matola as sing sing <laughs> so i'm supposed to believe that you were almost in prison there and you were expected to sing, to sing. And sing. <laughs> mariah carey made this wonderful trophy wife at this point, he's regarding her as his creation. For a birthday, he bought a silicon implants. It's a way of saying, I own you, I'm making you who I want to be. Well, one of the most gorgeous dames in New York, and she's mine. You can't be controlled. I allowed myself to be controlled. She was sort of under lock and key. I, I wasn't really allowed out of the house. You know, if she had been sort of hanging out a bit too late or, or you know, her movements were being monitored. But every time I got a chance and I let myself go and had some fun, it was almost like, you know, a dark cloud would come over and we'd all have to go, okay, let's not have so much fun now. And that meant every last movement. On a number of occasions, he would send bodyguards following in a car behind her when she was going to town. In one case, the bodyguards literally followed her to the women's room. Is it true that, that uh, Tommy eavesdropped on you uh, through an intercom system or, or, or would dial, redial if he made a phone call, that kind of thing? Did you feel that? True or not, did you feel it? Obviously you did. I have a record coming up. <laughs> when she started hanging out at the clubs with rap people, it just about drove him up the wall. How can you handle this type of situation? I mean, he was crazy. One night, they got in a big argument over it. She went and locked herself in a room, turned it all the way up to 10. It was blasting when he was on the other side of the door, just banging and screaming. I mean, it's pretty sad. You shouldn't go through your life always in fear of the next argument or the next issue or the next problem.